sixth graders. Welcome to another Bible lesson. We are continuing on with lesson two, our Old Testament overview. And today is lesson 2.3. And we are going to talk about God's path to completion. Now, most people love to play group games. But there are lots of ways to pick who's going to be on what team. And sometimes... Um, a teacher might let pick two captains and let the captains take turns choosing. And when that happens and you're chosen first, feels really good, right? When you're chosen last, doesn't feel so good. Um, but if you read um, in the Bible, you'll find that we are all chosen by God. Anyone who wants to follow him is chosen by him. God wants us on his team. And in fact, if you go to Genesis, get your Bible out, and go to the book of Genesis, you can go to chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, you'll read about when God called Abraham to be his servant and to be the chosen man to start a nation that would eventually bring the Messiah into the world. God selects people as his very own for a close relationship with him, and he wants us to bear fruit that will last all of our lives. Um, you can look at John 15, 16 to read about that. When we follow God in obedience, when we obey God and we follow him, we can live our best life, but it's only possible through Jesus to live our best life Without him, we're just sort of struggling and floating and not sure what to do. God's path. Um, if you're going to get onto God's path, if you're going to walk with God, that starts with his plan to save us. That's where that starts. And the path continues as we continually choose each day to get to know God better and to obey God. His word. Everything that God wants us to know about Him and about how we should act in this world is in our Bibles. Everything we need to know is here. When Adam and Eve made the choice to sin, God promised that there would be a Savior. You remember in Genesis 3.15, God promised that. And if you read in Galatians chapter 4, that's in the New Testament. It's one of Paul's letters. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. It says, When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. That phrase, fullness of time, means when it was just the right time. And then in Revelation, this, oh, this is such a good, such a good Bible verse. This is, um, you'll hear me say this a lot. This is one of my favorite Bible verses. This really is one of my favorite Bible verses because it talks about the end and what it's going to look like. Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 and 4. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men. And he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no longer any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. If you follow Jesus, if you make a choice to follow Jesus, and you every day continue to choose him, when you get to the end of your life, you're going to die, but you're not going to stay dead. Because when Jesus comes back, you're going to get to go be with him. And that is one of the best pieces of news. It is the best piece of news I've ever heard in my life. God's plan included covenants, promises, contracts with Abraham and with Moses the law of Moses emphasized obedience, but it was impossible to keep the whole law. A lot of people think, well, they just had the Ten Commandments. Oh, no, they had 
sacrifices all over the place. There were rules about what they could eat and what they couldn't eat. There were rules about how to wash your hands before you eat and how to wash your hands before you sacrifice. All kinds of rules about all kinds of things. 2 Corinthians 3.3 3 talks about how God's laws started as 12 laws on stone tablets, but now it's in people's hearts. If you have a stony heart, a heart of stone, I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase, but a heart of stone or someone who's hard-hearted means that they're stubborn and they won't change. And God knows that writing on people's hearts um, means that they're receptive to him. And because people have hard hearts and they don't want to, um, they want to do what they want to do. They don't want to do what God wants to do. God sent prophets. And um, all through the Old Testament, you'll hear about prophets like Nathan and prophets like Elijah and Elisha. And well, let's just talk about that for a minute. Um, Nathan. Nathan was a prophet who spoke against the sin in David's life. You may have heard the phrase, speak truth to power. And what that means is, is that Nathan told the truth to someone that had a lot of power back then, kings. If they didn't like what you had to say, they could lop your head off and nobody would bat an eye. It'd be just fine. But Nathan was courageous and he knew he needed to talk to David about his sin. And Nathan was brave enough to walk into that throne room and say, David, you are sinning against God. That was really brave of him because he could have lost his life for that. But he told David the truth. Elijah confronted Baal worship. You can read all about Elijah. And Elisha um, also confronted Baal worship and helped people, raised people from the dead, did all kinds of things in God's name while telling the Israelites, you need to turn away from this bad worship and come to God. Isaiah was also a prophet, and he also warned the people. But Isaiah is really neat because a lot of prophecies about Jesus are in the book of Isaiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. And in fact, he wrote the book called Lamentations. And a lament is just a really sad song about some really tough things that are going on in your life. And Jeremiah tried to warn the Israelites over and over and over again that they were going to be taken away into captivity. And he was abused and put in jail, but he continued to tell the Israelites what they needed to do to not have God's judgment on them, even though nobody listened to him. Daniel, once they were taken into exile, Daniel followed God's law and, again, told the truth to the people in power even at the risk of his own life. It's important for us to know God's truth, but just knowing God's truth doesn't do us any good if we don't respond to it. If you go to the book of James, I like the book of James because it's very, very practical. James tells us, you guys know those um, for dummies books, like Windows for Dummies or Algebra for Dummies, or Coding for Dummies, or Gardening for Dummies. It's this whole series of books. They're yellow and black. You can get them at Barnes & Noble, and you can get them to learn almost about anything. James is kind of like how to be a good person for dummies. James is really straightforward and simple and just tells us how we need to act and what we need to do. And in James chapter 1, verse 22, it says... Prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. It doesn't do you any good to hear the word of God if you don't put it into action. If you read Jeremiah 12, 3, one of the things that you'll see is how God judges people. And that God judges people by their thoughts and by their heart. So we've got, if we have good thoughts and a good heart, we're going to have good action. That's going to produce good action. And let's go to Psalm. We're going to read this one out loud. Psalms 139. Psalm chapter 139. Turn with me, if you will, please. Psalm 139. 
chapters or verses 23 and 24. And here's what they say. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. God wants us to follow him with all of our hearts. And today God's spoken through his son and through his word. And this is how we can learn what it is that he wants us to do and how he wants us to live. Now, I want you to go to page 7 in your workbook, and I want you to work on that page. And here's what I want to say. I want you to always remember that these pages should not take you any longer than 20 minutes. So, set a timer for 20 minutes before you begin, and when that timer goes off, you're done with the page. And if you had anything you got stuck on, I need you to email me and ask me questions, and I will email you back and try to give you hints and get you on the right track. Because these pages are not supposed to be a source of frustration and sometimes they're a little bit tricky in how they want you to word things. So I want you to understand that it should only take you 20 minutes and that if you take longer than that, you need to stop and ask for help, okay? Now, that's it for today. Tomorrow we'll be back with lesson 2.4 and I think we will probably have our test on Thursday. So have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.